Hi guys, my name is Balaj, and I'm here to share a speaker system that is designed and built. My speakers broke during winter break, so I decided to build my new ones instead so that I could design them to my own specifications. The first step was to get a hold of some quality drivers, tweeters, and a subwoofer. If I was going to build speakers, I wanted to design a system that performed to their highest capabilities, so I used the recommended volumes that came with the speaker components in order to maximize sound quality. First, I began with design. I started generating ideas. Once you have an idea, use Inventor, Katia, SolidWorks, or even Google SketchUp. I used Inventor to draw up my design. I highly recommend using 3D modeling software because you can always go back and alter your design at any time. This will allow you to follow a guideline that will tell you how long you need to cut each piece of wood. Without any sort of project plan, you will get nowhere because there are too many things to focus on. The next step was to cut the wood. In the video, you can see the gantry hard at work. I was looking for preciseness, so I used the gantry as much as I could. This required some previous knowledge of G-code and working with CNC type machines. The wood that I am using is called MDF or medium density fiberboard. I chose this type of wood because it is very dense and results in low resonance. Looking back on it, MDF came with some setbacks, such as very messy cutting. After cutting the MDF, the next step was to assemble the cabinets. For the assembly of the cabinets, you will need materials including hammer, nails, wood glue, I use type bond, a drill, and some clamps. An important aspect of speaker cabinets is that you want them to be as sealed as possible. My design still allows access to them through the back by removing the amp or the front by removing the subwoofer. I accomplish this by using T-nuts. The T-nut is attached to the inside of your cabinet prior to putting in the screw. The screw will then go through the wood, through the hole, and into the T-nut. I also made sure to use wood glue in all of the major crevices to provide an even better seal. Then came the first major test. After assembling the cabinets, I wanted to put together the components and test the speakers. As you can see, they worked, but looked rather unpleasant. There were several aesthetic improvements that were still need to be made. Maximizing aesthetic appeals, I decided to countersink the holes. Using a nail set, I pushed in the nails which allowed me to put wood filler in the holes. This makes it look as if there were no nails used in the first place.
Next came the very important sanding step. For the first round of sanding, I used 120 grit sandpaper. This grit size is for smoothing surfaces and small imperfections. It is a very important process because it will level the surfaces between the wood filler and the MDF. Now it was time to begin priming the cabinets. Primer is important to use before painting because it ensures better adhesion of paint to the surface. It also increases paint durability and provides additional protection for the material being painted. I use a roller to apply the primer and a small paintbrush for smaller locations. It is important to sand once again. This time I used 400 grit sandpaper which allows for a final, smoother finish. In a project like this, it is normal to go up with grits as you progress. This results in a finer and smoother looking finish. After priming, it is time to begin painting. No, I wasn't wearing a scarf because it was cold outside, I just didn't want to directly breathe in the paint fumes. I ended up applying at least three coats of paint. This eventually gave it a balanced look and prevented any blemishes. It results in a rather smoother finish. I let the paint sufficiently dry at least two days before even touching the cabinets. The next step was to assemble the subwoofer first, followed by the two mid-range cabinets. The subwoofer's components include a 12-inch 500 amp subwoofer and a Dayton Audio 100 watt amplifier. I was lucky enough to find polyfill material which produces better sound quality. When polyfill is added to your enclosure, the air spring within the box begins an isothermal process. When the air passes through the polyfill, it is scattered and dissipated by the fibers, causing the air to be less dense. The speaker then interacts with the enclosure as if it is larger than it really is, which changes the sound. The subwoofer design also includes an infinity mirror that combines my love for LEDs and speakers. You will soon see what an infinity mirror does. Next, I assembled the mid-range cabinets. For this step, you will need a soldering iron, solder, two drivers, two tweeters, mine look funny because they're ribbon tweeters, two crossovers, two ports, 18 gauge speaker wire, and of course screws and a screwdriver. After choosing a driver and tweeter, I had to decide on a crossover frequency that optimized the sound quality of the speakers. This frequency was 8000 Hz. A crossover is an electronic device consisting of resistors, capacitors, and inductors that takes a single input signal and creates two or three output signals consisting of separated bands of high, mid, and low range frequencies. I soldered the components and added the plexiglass. The mid-range speakers both connect to a Lafayette stereo receiver. The auxiliary cord is connected to a splitter cable that splits the signal and sends it both to the subwoofer and the mid-range speakers. I then began to prepare the plexiglass and apply the solar film. There is a specific strategy to applying solar film because you don't want any remaining bubbles or imperfections. I used window application solution and a credit card to smooth out the film. Finally, you can assemble the infinity mirror. The infinity mirror works with an initial layer of mirror and a strip of LEDs that lies between the mirror and a layer of plexiglass. The plexiglass has a layer of solar film on it. The reflection provides the illusion that it continues forever into the subwoofer. The final design was actually inspired by my school. I'm an engineering student at Purdue University and I decided to make the speakers Purdue themed, which is why the infinity mirror has a P in the center. Black and gold are the known colors of Purdue. The gold color of the speakers is actually a shade of gold known as Purdue Gold. 
The transparent design allows for you to see the components of the cabinet, which piques the curiosity of almost any human. The transparent design of the mid-range speakers also allows for future refinements, such as adding LEDs to the mid-range cabinets by using a low-pass filter that multiplies the bass values to flash to the music. This was an amazing project, and I'd like to thank all my friends and family for their help and support. I'd especially like to thank my friend Greg for providing his input throughout the process. Please feel free to post or ask any questions you may have. Thank you.